Uh, my name is Christoph Fleischmann. I'm a sales engineer here at the company Spilling uh, in Hamburg uh, since 18 years now. I originally have uh, studied chemical engineering, but uh, uh, have uh, early leave the chemical sector and uh, gone to energy um, yes, uh, um, items. And, and so uh, I, I feel really well <laughs> here at Spilling because it's a very interesting field to do and especially uh, with a um, mechanical vapor recompression, the steam compressors. This is more and more becoming our main product here at Spilling. Spilling has started as a steam engine manufacturer. So with these piston machines, uh, expanding steam from higher to lower pressure level in industries and making um, power from this electrical power or maybe also mechanical power. This was uh, our business for centuries. But meanwhile, our business is changing and uh, for industries it's becoming more and more interesting to use these piston machines uh, in the other way around so take low pressure steam which is available uh, from a cooling process or so from um, uh, cooling yes uh, cooling of a, a product or of an exothermic reaction and compress by this um, and and compress uh, this low pressure steam which uh, is occurring from that to high pressure levels again and um, this is also what I would like to show today. Um, uh, my presentation about uh, these piston steam compressors, uh, which are able uh, to reach um, process heat temperatures of up to 250 degrees Celsius or up to about 40 bar with these machines. Here, my first uh, slide <laughs> is more or less what uh, Frederick has also explained uh, before. Um, here is shown a cascade of uh, heat pumps uh, showing um, the different technologies uh, of heat pumps which are available. This is uh, even um, simpler, simpler, um, yes, um, uh, um, uh, yes, uh, presentation here than than um, Frederick has done because uh, yes, it's it's uh, only a few a few types are shown here, but um, these different uh, heat pump systems like it's shown here uh, refer very often to different temperature levels where they are operating for example at the lower end you can uh, maybe um, use ammonia heat pumps to lift a uh, very low temperature heat of say 20 to 40 degrees celsius uh, maybe available from a, a cooling cycle in the industry or from uh, exhaust heat from um, absorption chillers or other chillers uh, and lift this uh, quite low temperature level with these ammonia heat pumps to say something like 60 to 80 degrees Celsius. Then um, there are other heat pump systems, uh, these so-called high temperature heat pumps. Frederick has mentioned <laughs> that high temperature heat pump is uh, not a defined uh, defi uh, yes, uh, name. It can uh, be very, very different um, kinds of, of uh, systems. But um, as we understand from our point of view, uh, these um, high temperature heat pumps, like also SPH uh, will show la later this, uh, today, uh, can, can then lift uh, such uh, heat sources uh, from 60 to 80 degrees Celsius quite good to temperatures of above. 100 degrees Celsius, maybe even 120 to 160 degrees Celsius, and uh, making um, also steam from this uh, uh, high temperature heat, which is then available. Or, um, like uh, Gregor Schum has mentioned, there is also the other way around um, how this uh, 60 to 80 degrees um, heat can be um, taken, take it uh, with vacuum steam. Uh, producing with this um, heat source um, steam with say 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 bar absolute and compress this uh, with uh, for example the serial of uh, blowers uh, to overpressure and uh, come by this maybe to 2 to 5 or to, to 10 bar and um, what we see here in this uh, slide is uh, the piston steam compressor uh, like we do it uh, this is then uh, the right application for the, the upper end of this uh, chain. Um, 
when when a low pressure steam we call it low pressure steam uh, but still in over pressure range uh, is available with say two to five bar then this can be compressed uh, with such a piston machine to say 10 bar or even 20 bar or even uh, 40 bar and supply this uh, to the process to the industrial process how it's required and uh, this is what i would like to uh, explain today how these machines, these piston steam compressors look like and how they work. Um, here on this slide, you see uh, such a unit. Um, we at Spilling built these machines with um, a, a piston machine with up to six cylinders, so up to six working pistons. The number of cylinders um, is depending uh, to the flow rate which shall be managed. The more cylinders are available, which can operate in parallel, the more steam flow we can pass through this machine. Uh, but it also depends on or can depend on the compression ratio, which shall be realized. We can combine these up to six cylinders uh, to up to three compression stages. So, for example, a three stage compressor can look like this, that you do have um, three low pressure cylinders compressing, for example, steam from two bar absolute to six bar absolute. Then the next two cylinders are then compressing the steam from six to 15, and the last high pressure cylinder from 15 to 30 bar. And this all in one machine. And so we get a quite um, high um, pressure increase and also temperature increase, what we can realize with one machine. Um, here um, at the end, uh, or the, the uh, yes, uh, the, the uh, pistons, uh, with their crankshaft are driven from an electrical motor typically, uh, which uh, is um, uh, uh, able to, to vary its speed, so a variable uh, speed drive is uh, connected. And uh, the typical speeds of these units are between 300 and 1000 runs per minute, so it's a variable in this range. And accordingly, also the steam flow rate, which can pass through this compressor, uh, can vary in a comparable range between 30 and 100 percent. And um, yes, now the nice thing is that uh, for the complete control range, the efficiency of these uh, compressors is uh, constant. So the electrical power demand, what they consume, is really proportional to the steam flow rate which is going through. And this is uh, quite, quite uh, big advantage against also other uh, turbo systems, for example. So these machines are mounted on such a base frame, a heavy frame. This is um, a steel frame filled with concrete to absorb or the, the vibrations coming from these piston movements. On the bottom, we have here damper elements. And so all can be put uh, simply on a concrete floor. We don't need a separate foundation on site. Uh, what can be said about the steam parameters? They are described here above. On the inlet side, we say there should be steam available into the compressor with at least two bar absolute. Um, the reason for this is uh, more economical because uh, when the steam pressure is even lower, when it's say only one bar absolute atmospheric pressure, um, then its specific volume is that big that uh, you cannot um, handle or, or um, um, make a, a attractive steam flow rate through each cylinder uh, in, in kilograms per hour. And this uh, makes these units then quite expensive. And so we say the steam should be uh, certainly pre-compressed, say it like that. And on the outlet side, we are uh, limited with our standard materials here uh, to up to 40 bar. The reason for this is um, the piston rings, what we are using here, this is the working piston, for example, and this is the slide valve and both, uh, yes, uh, pistons have piston rings and uh, they are temperature resistant only up to 260 degrees Celsius. And uh, this limits uh, so the possible outlet pressure to about uh, 40 bar. But for most uh, industrial applications, this is uh, uh, high enough. Um, yes, typical steam flow rates are here shown for these big uh, units uh, in the range of 3 to 15 tons per hour. 
in uh, some cases also 20 or even 30 tons per hour can be managed with, with one uh, machine. And uh, what can also be said is that in one compression stage, uh, we can um, uh, increase the pressure of up to factor three. So for example, uh, from two to six bar absolute can be done in one stage or also from four to 12 bar in one stage. Uh, for even higher pressure increases, we need then two stages or maybe even three stages. So the efficiency, what I've mentioned of these uh, piston machines is quite good. And uh, this can also be seen here uh, in these diagrams. Um, here on the lower diagram with the yellow line, uh, there is shown the COP factor as function of the compression ratio. When we, for example, have a compression ratio of uh, factor three, so for example, from compression from three to nine bar, um, we have a COP factor of about six, meaning that uh, the outcoming steam, its um, heat content uh, is six times as high compared to the electrical power demand of this compressor. Or the Upper uh, diagram shows uh, the same relationship, only a little uh, with different figures here. It's shown the electrical power demand uh, per ton of steam, which is compressed in kilowatt hours. So for example, for compression ratio three from three to nine bar, for example, we need about 100 kilowatt hours of electricity to compress one ton of steam. Then I would uh, like to show a few reference plants to get an idea uh, what is uh, done so far with these units. Here, for example, uh, is uh, shown the uh, installation drawing of a six cylinder unit from the top view, um, uh, which is a, a single stage compressor. All six cylinders are doing here the same. They are compressing here from 2.3 to 4.9 bar. It's installed at a chemical uh, plant in, in Germany where they do have um, excess steam from a product cooling on this 2.3 bar level. And um, they want to recycle this steam uh, to their uh, process steam supply pipe, which is operated on 4.9 bar level, um, supplying then uh, heat for different uh, other processes. And here the compression ratio is quite attractive. It's only about 2.3. And so we get here a quite good uh, COP factor of about 9.5. Uh, so with these uh, six cylinders here and these pressure levels, we manage uh, about 10 tons per hour of steam flow. At this plant, you see um, two big six cylinder units. Um, they are installed at a paper pulp drying in Sweden um, and are compressing a steam from 3.2 bar to 16 bar. Um, and this is happening here in a double stage uh, compression. So each unit has four low pressure cylinders and two high pressure cylinders. So in the four, four low pressure cylinders, the steam is compressed from three to eight bar about and in the two high pressure cylinders then from eight to 16. And uh, the compression ratio is here about a factor five and accordingly the COP factor is here a little lower but still quite attractive with about 4.2. All uh, is installed here for uh, this um, paper pulp dryer and this dryer is operated with uh, this 16 bar steam so this uh, brings the heat to the dryer and out of the uh, drying pulp, steam is evaporating here under overpressure, under 3.5 bar, something like this. And so this uh, outcoming um, steam from the pulp um, is cleaned in a stage and then uh, recompressed by our compressor unit. And so the whole drying process is more or less self-supplying, supplying itself with heating steam. The only energy input into the system is here, the electrical power demand for the compressors. Then um, uh, example for a smaller unit here, this is now a, a one cylinder unit uh, at a dairy in Mongolia. 
uh, they had the situation that they do have uh, on their site um, steam available from a district heating system which is operated with steam with 4.5 bar but for a single process for a spray dryer they needed nine bar and so they simply took this quite um, cheap 4.5 bar steam compressed it with uh, this uh, one cylinder unit up to nine bar and uh, by this uh, get a quite uh, attractive um, nine bar steam supply and also here uh, compression ratio is two so the COP factor is here above 10. And last but not least uh, to show you that uh, this is also possible on higher pressure levels here a steam compressor in the US at a chemical plant compressing steam from uh, 14 bar to 34 bar um, because we are here even at the inlet on a quite high pressure and so also on a quite high temperature level we do have to do these uh, compression stages a little careful say it like that with a condensate injection in between um, and do it here in two stages so this unit has uh, two low pressure cylinders and one high pressure cylinder although the compression ratio is only about uh, two point something and so um, in these higher temperature ranges uh, we do not reach a compression ratio of three anymore in one stage but we have to do it uh, in, in smaller steps there. So I'm at the end of my presentation and uh, yes, uh, looking forward to a discussion with you. Thank you very much.